Hi guys! Salamat sa inyong patuloy na pagsubaybay dito sa ating ginagawang discussion about statics of rigid bodies. In today's discussion, we shall be solving another problem that deals with the equilibrium of concurrent force system in space. And here is the problem guys. Determine the vertical shape load W that can be supported by the tripod as shown in the figure without exceeding a compressive load of 2,400 pounds in any member. Guys, this problem was taken from the book of Seeger. Okay, and this is the problem 3-6.10. There is an answer on the book. Okay, the answer is 5,200. Guys, kapag ganito yung problem, ano, basically, ang ginagawa natin ay ini-express natin yung lahat ng force acting on each member in terms of the unknown W. At mula doon, ikinukumpara natin yung supposed to be maximum safe load W na kung saan hindi dapat ihigit yung compressive load, compressive load dun sa members acting or supporting the weight W. And when we deal this kind of problem, okay, the first thing that we should be doing is to indicate the coordinates of the points. At gaya nga ng problem nito, wala naman ditong sinasabi kung alin yung origin. So, you can select whichever point shall be treated as our origin. Now, assuming that we should be using this F as the origin, okay, such that this F has a coordinate of 0, 0, 0, then we establish the coordinates of all other points considering that F is at 0, 0, 0. So, let's start with point A. How are we going to establish the coordinate of point A given that this is at 0, 0, 0? Sa so, makatwid, point A will be at negative 2, 0, and 4. Then, we also consider the coordinate of point B. What will be the coordinate of point B with this as our 0? It will be at negative 2, 0 and negative 5. How, how about point C? Point C will be at 4, 0, 0 and point D will be at 0, 6, 0. After we have established the coordinates of all those points in the problem, then we can now uh, establish the relationship between the force acting on the member as well as its respective or their respective components. And it could be good if we will be using the tabulated form of computation such that this form will indicate okay, the magnitude of the force, the component of the distance where the force are directed, the distance between the points from which this force is directed, and from these magnitudes, we can compute for the components of the force in the x, in the y, and in the z direction. So let's start with the force W, which is an unknown and directed from point D to point F, so that if we shall be okay, filling up this table, then our force would have a magnitude of W, ang kanyang X component dito will be zero kasi wala namang component siya in the X direction. Similarly, ang component along Y shall be the difference between the coordinate of point F and the coordinate of point D and that is equal to 0 minus 6 and that is negative 6 whereas the, co the magnitude of the Z component between F and D shall be equal to 0 minus 0 and that is 0 so that from here we can compute for the distance between D and F and that is by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the x, the y, and the z, and that gives us a value of 6. So that from these values, we can compute for the magnitude of the components of the force in the x, in the y, and in the z direction. Okay, it so happened here that since w is directed in the downward direction, it will have no x component and no z component, and its component shall be directed only in the y direction. And this will also be okay, shown if you will be using the value using this okay, um, magnitude of the components of W in the X, in the Y, and in the Z direction. So that we have here Fx equals 0, Fy equals negative W, 
and FJ is also equal to zero. Now let us try to analyze the force acting on member AC. We will expect that, sorry, member AD. We will expect that the force acting on member AD shall be directed towards D because it is intended to support the weight of W. Thus, the magnitude of AD shall be known as AD and it is directed such that the component of the force, uh, the component of the distance between A and D shall be equal to 0 minus negative 2 so that you have here K positive 2. 6 minus 0 will be equal to 6 and 0 minus 4 will be equal to negative 4. And the distance between the points A and D shall be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 6 squared plus negative 4 squared which is when computed shall be equal to the square root of 56. So that the magnitude of the components of AD in the X, in the Y, and in the Z shall be computed as follows. AD times 2 divided by this square root of 56 will give us okay, the component of AD in the X which is equal to 2AD over the square root of 56. Similarly, the component of AD in the Y direction shall be equal to 6 multiplied by AD divided by the square root of 56. And that, the magnitude of the component of AD in the Z direction shall be equal to negative 4 AD divided by the square root of 56. And that is negative 4 AD divided by the square root of 56. Now, we do the same for the force acting on BD. Let us now try to analyze BD. Here is the force BD. Again, it is directed from B to D as it is intended to support the weight W. So that the magnitude of here is unknown. So let us just use the symbol BD. The magnitude of the XYZ component of the points between D and B shall be equal to 0 minus negative 2. And this is positive 2. 6 minus 0, that gives us 6. And 0 minus negative 5 gives us a value of 5. And from here, we can compute for the distance between B and D, and this is equal to the square root of 65. Again, using the same process to compute for okay, the X, Y, and Z component of the force BD, it will be equal to 2BD over the square root of 65. Whereas this one will be 6BD over the square root of 65, and this one will be 5 multiplied by BD over the square root of 65. Then finally, we can also okay, analyze Okay, the force acting on okay, the member CD. It is the force acting on member CD. Again, it will be directed upward as it is to support the weight W. So that the magnitude of which is unknown, so let us just call it CD. And the components in the X, in the Y, and in the Z will be equal to 0 minus 4. That gives us negative 4. 6 minus 0 gives us 6. And 0 minus 0 gives us zero so that the distance between them shall be the square root of 52 so from here we can compute for the component of the component of the force in the x in the y and in the z so that this becomes negative 4 cd over the square root of 52 this one will be 6 cd over the square root of 52 while this one is zero so after we have computed or established okay, the components of the forces in the x, in the y, and in the z direction, we can now analyze, you know, okay, is there a need for us to immediately solve for the magnitude of one of the unknowns by applying force summation? And that is by looking at, okay, this column, the x, the y, and in the z, are there any column where we can already express the relationship between all of those unknowns and that of W? And you will notice that there is none. There is no column that will give us directly the relationship between any of those forces with that of W. And so it is not yet possible to consider summing up forces along the direction of the X, the Y, and the Z. So we will be resorting now is to the summation of moment, the other conditions of equilibrium from moment. And now if we are going to analyze the situation, you will notice that okay, the unknown AD and BD are both 
directed or passing through this axis that is directed along AB. Diba? Directed along AB. So that if we shall be summing up moment about this axis, then the two unknowns will be eliminated and we shall be able to solve for the force acting on member CD. So that, okay, we'll notice that CD can be solved immediately by summing up moments about the axis AB. So let us now try to apply this condition. Here is our axis and we sum up moment about that okay, AB equal to zero. And again, we shall be using the convention such that this convention counterclockwise about this axis shall be equal to zero. Now, what are those forces that will be involved in the moment? We will only have okay, the vertical component of a CD. Okay? The horizontal component will also create no moment because it will also pass through that axis. And therefore, this will be the only force involved as well as the magnitude of W. But what is this okay, vertical component? You'll notice that the vertical component is taken from this okay, uh, CDY that is equal to 6 CD over the square root of 52. And that if we are going to sum up moment, therefore we will have here okay, CD multiplied by the moment arm. And the moment arm of CD is the sum of 2 and 4. That is why it is equal to 6. Minus okay, the moment due to W whose moment arm shall be equal to 2. And that gives us okay, an equation that should be equal to 0. And so from here, we can compute right away okay, the relationship between the Y component of CD and that of W. Substituting the value of CDY, which is equal to 6CD over the square root of 52. So, I divide ko ngayon ito, transpose ko ngayon ito sa kabila, and then it divide it by 6, we will have here the right hand side being equal to W over 3. And the left hand side will be equal to 6CD over the square root of 52 representing this magnitude. So that this will be equal to W over T. And so from here, we can get the relationship between CD and W such that CD now is equal to K.4 of W. So we already have one relationship that is the magnitude of CD now expressed in terms of W. Now let us try to find for the other K forces acting on the other member. Okay. If we are going to sum up moment about an axis through A and that is parallel to the X axis, where is K point A? I have here point A. And say parallel to the X axis is that I will be taking moment about this axis. What is my purpose? What is my intention of taking moment here? For me to be able to solve for the force acting on member BD without using the, okay, with by eliminating you know, the force acting on member AD and therefore we shall be able to compute for the force acting on this member BD. So that when we sum up moment about an axis through A, so we shall have K equal to zero. So here is our axis. So what will be our moment equation? Our moment equation shall be equal to this, the moment due to this B, okay, which is equal to, okay, pinuha ko lang yung value ng uh, uh, BY, you know? so that you have here BDY multiplied by 9 plus CDY multiplied by 4. The moment arm of the CDY will be equal to this 4. Okay. Minus W multiplied by 4 shall be equal to 0. If BDY is and CDY shall be substituted with this value, CDY is equal to 6 CD over the square root of 52, while that value is equal to W over T, this magnitude. And BDY is equal to 6BD over the square root of 65. Now, if these two shall be substituted in this equation, so I will have okay, 6BD over the square root of 65 multiplied by 9 okay, plus W over 3. Itong W over 3 na ito, ay, yun na yun yung value ng 6CD over the square root of 52 coming from this relationship. Ayun, ito yung relationship na ito. Then, transposing this to the right-hand side shall be equal to 4W. Now, simplifying, then expressing the relation between BD and W, then BD and W will give us the relationship that BD 
will be equal to 0.398 of W. So we already have another value. Now after we have taken for BD, now is there a way now that we can compute for the other relationship using the table? Now if you are going to look at this column, FZ column. So we can, we are now here, the value of BD expressed in terms of W, and therefore we can solve for AD by summing up forces here along the Z axis. So that when we sum up force along the Z axis equal to zero, I will have negative 4 AD over the square root of 56 plus 5 BD K over the square root of 65 shall be equal to zero. Now simplifying, K okay, that becomes 4 AD over the square root of 56 shall be equal to 5 BD over the square root of 65. But BD is already given to be this part. Okay. Ito yung aking part na sasubstitute. Ano? The value of BD over the square root of 65 is equal to, okay, multiplied by 6. Ano? Multiplied by 6. So, I will substitute this BD over the square root of 65 by 8 over W. Ito yun. So, itong 8 over W, 8 W over 27 divided by 6 is actually equal to BD over the square of 65. Even multiply ko ng 5 because of the 5 here, then divide ko ng 4 because of the 4 there, and then I multiply it by the square of 56. And so, simplifying that gives us a value of AD equal to 0.467W. Now, after we have computed now for AD, BD, and CD, all expressed in terms of W, then we cannot compute for the magnitude of W, such that no member between AB, I'm sorry, AD, BD, and CD shall be, shall have a compressive load that would exceed a value of 2,400. So that when we compute for W, K for AD, knowing that AD is equal to 0.462 of W, so that when AD is equal to 2,400, we shall be able to compute for W of 5194.805 W while for BD which is this one the value of BD is 0.398 W so that when BD is uh, K 2400 we shall be able to solve for W and W is equal to 6030.151 and then for CD the value of CD that we have taken a while ago is 0.4 W now, if CD will be equal to 2,400, then W becomes 6,000. So, we have here three values of W. And we are asked to solve what is the safe, maximum safe W. That would not exceed okay, a magnitude of 2,400 pounds in any member. Now, let us try to make an analysis. We are going to analyze this AD. According to this uh, condition, AD would have 2,400 if its value of W is 5,194. Ang ibig sabihin to, ito na yung pinakamalaking W na ang kanyang stress o kanyang compressive load will be 2,400. If this will be more than this magnitude, ibig sabihin itong value nito ay higit, which will not be the case because according to the, to the condition, any member should not be more than 2,400. So that if W will be 6,030, ang ibig sabihin to, AD would have a value more than 2,400. Or if W is 6,000, ang ibig sabihin to, yung AD natin would also have a value of more than 2,400. Kaya sa tatlong W na nakompute natin, the safe W, that will give us a compressive load in any member that will not be, will not exceed 2,400 shall be that value coming from AD which is equal to 5,194.805. Therefore, okay, this is the maximum safe W as this will not cause a maximum compressive load in any member to be more than 2,400. I hope guys that you are able to follow my discussion. 
about solving problems that deals with an equilibrium of concurrent force system in space. And there will be more problems to come. In my next video, I'll be preparing for an equilibrium of non-concurrent force system in space. Then all the other topics in statics of rigid bodies shall be prepared. Kaya yeah, guys, huwag nyo kong iwan sa discussion natin about these topics. Continue okay, watching my videos and if it is possible, share this to your friends so that they will also be notified of my next upload, uploads. Again, thank you very much for watching.